Now, thank you for tuning in, YouTube, for another edition of this Bible class, Truth Hour. Our lesson for today is God never gave man religion, and Jesus never gave us Christianity. God never gave man religion, and Jesus never gave man Christianity. Let's look into this thing. Let's look at it real deep. So pull out, brothers and sisters, your, uh, what is it called? Your, your, your paper, your pen. Take notes um, with this lesson for tonight. And, of course, bring your Bible because we want you to read this word of God with us. Okay? We want you to read the word of God with us. Let's see. <laughs> Now, there are roughly 4,200 religions in the world today. Did I hear what I said? There are roughly 4,200 religions in the world today. Now, out of all of these religions, Christianity is the largest out of all these religions, followed by Islam. But let us do our research in this, and I'm going to read off these numbers to you. And see if we can find evidence of which religion or religions is the religion of God. Now, Christianity makes up 2.1 billion followers with the B. Okay? 2.1 billion followers. Islam represents 1.3 billion followers. Now, non-religion, secular, agnostic, atheist, they make up 1.1 billion people who follow them. Hinduism makes up 900 million. Um, Chinese traditional, traditional religion makes up 394 million followers. Buddhism has 376 million followers. Primal indigenous religions make up 300 million followers. And African traditional and diaspora religions make up 100 million followers. Now we have all these religions. But we only got one God, one creator of the heaven and the earth. So how is it that we have all these religions but only one God? Let's get into this. Let's go to Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Does this line up with scripture, all these different religions? Let us search the scripture and get our first piece of evidence on the way to solving this, this, this religion problem. Ephesians 4, and we're going to read 4 through 6. Turn your Bibles to the book of Ephesians 4. And we're going to read 4 through 6. And it reads, there is one body and one spirit, even as you are called and one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Wait a minute. We got one faith? According to what we just read, brothers and sisters, the world has several faiths. So it looks like the world don't line up with what's written in the word of God. I'll read it again. Verse 5, Ephesians 4 and 5. One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. So if there's one God and Father of all, something is wrong because... That same one God and one Father can't be in all of us if there are so many different religions. So let's look at this thing and let's analyze this thing. Let's go to the book of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. When we have a ministry and share that ministry with the world, brothers and sisters, there may be some who challenge the validity of our ministry. And rightly so, according to the word of God, 
What must we do as followers of Jesus and ministers of God? Let's go to 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. And let's see what our responsibility is as those who carry the word, brothers and sisters. 2 Timothy 4, and we're going to read 2 through 5. 2 Timothy 4, 2 through 5, and it reads, Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. And it seems like that's where we are now. It seems like we're living in a world where our family don't even accept the doctrine that comes out of this book. Especially this new generation, they'll say that, hey, there is no God, there is no Jesus, there's only science, there's only the universe, right? But according to the word of God that we're reading right now, 2 Timothy chapter 4, uh, verse 3, it says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. And that's what's happening now. The universe created man. What do you mean? The universe created man? Our blood vessels? Our white cells? Our red cells? Our lungs? Our heart? Our kidneys? Oh, the universe created that. So we're living in a time today where even when we share this word with those whom we love, it says here, they're not going to endure or listen to or hear sound doctrine. Today's lesson, brothers and sisters, is God never gave man religion and Jesus never gave us Christianity. I think you see where we're going right now, brothers and sisters. Let's see what God does give us, though. God gives us commandment, not religion. Again, God gives us commandment, not religion. Let's go back to the beginning of the Bible in the book of Genesis, the first chapter, right? Surely in the book of Genesis, when man was created, he told man what he wanted him to do. And since we have all these different religions, let's look at the word of God in Genesis, the first chapter, and let's build this thing up. Okay. Genesis, the first chapter, 26 and 27. Genesis 1, and we're going to read verses 26 and 27. When a man was first put together, let's see what God instructed. And God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. So we're made in the image of God. We're made in the likeness of God. We're just not made out of the same substance that God is made out of because God is spirit and we are flesh and blood. It says, and let them, right? So man is uniplural. Man is individual and man is also the species, just like God is uniplural. God represents one being, but it also represents a family which consists of two, the father and the son. So that's learning something on the way to learning something. It said, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creep up upon the earth. So God created man in his own image and the image of God created he him male and female created he them. So not only is the male called man, the female is called man too. She's part of the family of man or mankind, as we call it. But let's continue building this thing up. Let's go to the book of Genesis, the second chapter. The first time in the Bible the word commandment was used was in the book of Genesis, brothers and sisters. The word commandment, command, or 
commanded is used over 839 times in the Bible. Let's go to Genesis 2, 16 through 17. Genesis 2 and 16 and 17, and it reads, and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you should not eat of it, for in the day that you eat thereof you shall surely die. The, the, is this religion that God has given man? No, this is commandment that God has given man. So God didn't give man religion. He gave man commandment. Let's look at this thing a little bit further, brothers and sisters. Let's go to the book of Amos. Well, we know what happened before we go to the book of Amos. Man was disobedient and he did not follow the commandment of God. Therefore, man fell from his perfected state to the imperfected state that we are right now. And when sin was brought into God's creation, because when you break commandment, that's called sin. According to the word of God, sin is the transgression or the breaking of the law or commandment. So when man broke commandment, sin was introduced into humanity. And when sin was introduced to humanity or brought into humanity, death followed sin. But we're not going to stop there. Out of all the nations of peoples on the earth, God made a relationship or built a relationship with one nation. Well, how can you say that? Well, what about all the nations on the earth? God wants to save everyone that follows his Lord and uh, his son, which is our Lord and Savior, Jesus, the Christ, to him, he wants to save all. But that does not discount the fact that he only developed the relationship with one nation. And through that nation, he was reaching for every other nation. But let's go and look at that nation in which he established the relationship with. Let's go to Amos, the third chapter. Now, I know some of you all may say, and to, before I read this, what are you talking about? Don't that seem like God is kind of narrow-minded and single-minded? And, and, and what do you mean he only establishes a relationship with one people? Let's read it. Amos 3, 1 and 2. And this is coming from the Bible, brothers and sisters. I'm not talking out of my mind. We're reading the word. It says, hear this word which the Lord has spoken against you. So who is this speaking? This is the Lord through the mouth of Amos. It says, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt. Who did he bring up from the land of Egypt? It was Israel. What did he say to Israel? He said at verse 2, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all of your iniquities. Well, that doesn't mean that he's not knowledgeable and aware of all of the other families of the earth. It says, you only have I known, so you are the only one that I built a relationship with. So as no, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's no uh, mystery that you see our people going through what we're going through as opposed to every other nations of people. So when you see black people, sons and daughters of the transatlantic slave trade, go to jail three to four times more than any other nation of people. Anybody else can commit the same crime that we commit, but we get longer jail sentences. You pull us over, other nationalities can talk back to the police and get and get a slap on the wrist. I, I've seen the videos of our white counterparts arguing back and forth with the police. But somehow we get shot and killed when we argue with the police. But 
because of this right here, the Lord said, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all of your iniquities. What we're going through is punishment from the Lord, brothers and sisters, because we had a relationship that we established with God and we broke that. But let's read a little bit more because we're talking about God never gave man religion and Jesus never gave the world Christianity. Let's go to the book of Psalms, the 147th chapter. We're going to look at another place in the Bible that confirms what we just read in the book of Amos. Now, this is crucial to our understanding of how we are to receive and accept the truth of the word. Let's go to Psalms 147, 19 and 20. Psalms 147. And we're going to read verses 19 and 20. And it reads, He showed his word unto Jacob. Jacob, brothers and sisters, name was changed to Israel. And so when the Bible mentions Jacob, which is our father of our nation, it's the same as saying Israel. They are both equal or even or mean the same thing. So you can say the word Jacob or you can say the word Israel. But let's read it. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He has not dealt so with any nation. Wait a minute. What about the African people? He has not dealt so with any nation. What about the Germans that were persecuted under Hitler who called themselves Israel? He has not dealt so with any nation. What about the Romans, the Catholic Church that came out of Rome? He has not dealt so with any nation. As for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. So we can understand, brothers and sisters, how the world can go astray because the world is ruled by the Gentile. And if he have not dealt with the Gentile, then you can understand why we have all these holidays that pop up here and there and how they can give Jesus a birth date on December the 25th, when the Bible doesn't say it. We can understand that now, reading this scripture and this word, that God has not dealt with them. As for his judgments, they have not known them. So when they break the statutes, the laws, and the commandments, they don't get penalized like we get penalized because it was given to us brothers and sisters. It was given to us. So let's go ahead and continue reading. We're talking about how God never gave man religion. And Jesus never gave the world Christianity. Let's go back to the book of Genesis, brothers and sisters. Well, you know what I'm going to do because we got a lot of ground to cover here. We got a lot of ground to cover, so I'm not going to go through the book of Genesis. You know what? I'll go through a little bit of it. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but this deals with God's um, holy days, right? And it just shows you the difference between what we have now and what God gave us. So Genesis, the 10th chapter. We're going to read this a little bit because Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, right? So out of the three sons came 16 nations of people, right? But if he only dealt with Israel, brothers and sisters, this eliminates all of the other nations that came out of the sons of Noah. Let's go to Genesis, the 10th chapter. 
Genesis, the 10th chapter. And we're going to read verses 1 and 2, Genesis 10. And we're going to read verses 1 and 2. It says, now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Ham, Japheth, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and unto them were sons born after the flood. Now, I'm going to do something real quick because I want you to understand who the Bible defines as being Gentiles. Now, I know that it has been told that if you're not a Jew, you are a Gentile. That is not biblical. That came out of the mind of some man. It didn't come out of the mind of God. And this is why we say God didn't give man religion. That's a, relig a, a religious theology that if you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. Let's read who the Gentiles are in the book of Genesis, the 10th chapter. Remember, there are three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. But we're only going to read about Japheth right now. Let's see who the de Bible defines the descendants of Japheth as. Number two through five, the sons of Japheth, Gomar and Magog and Madai and Javan and Tubal and Meshes and Tyres. Now, these are your Greeks, your Romans, your Russians, and all of those that come off the European continent. You can look it up today. You can look it up, type it in your Google search engine. Who are the descendants of Japheth today? And it's going to show you that these are the Europeans that came off the European continent. But let's continue reading. And the sons of Gomar, Ashkenaz. Now, Ashkenaz is what the people who were persecuted by Hitler called themselves. They called themselves Ashkenaz Jews or Ashkenazi Jews. You see the word Nazi is in there because that was the German people. Okay, but these Ashkenazi Jews came from the seed of Japheth. But let's find out who they really are, according to the Bible. It's saying the sons of Gomar, Ashkenaz, Raphael, and Togomar, and the sons of Javan, Elisha, and Tarshish, and Kittim, and Dodanum. By these were the isles of the Gentiles. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me those people? that were persecuted in the 1940s by Hitler and the Germans, they were Gentiles, yes. They were Germans that adopted the doctrine of the Israelites. I can't even say the religion, because God didn't give the Israelites religion. He gave us doctrine. Okay, and every um, European that comes off the continent of Europe or uh, are what the Bible calls Gentiles. Well, wait a minute. What about if you're African? You're not a Gentile. No, brothers and sisters. And in addition to that, brothers and sisters, there was only one tribe out of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel that came out of Judah according to the lineage, brothers and sisters. You got Benjamin, Joseph, Naphtali, Asher, Gad, Issachar, Zebulon. Then you got Judah. You got Levi, Simeon, Reuben. Well, these are Israelites. None of these are Gentiles. So how can it be that if you're not only out of this tribe, Judah, then you are a Gentile? No, brothers and sisters. We have to correct the wrongs that have been taught and the misteachings from those who stand in front of the congregation. Now, let's continue reading from this lesson tonight. Let's go to the book of Exodus, the 32nd chapter, verses 1 through 8. Exodus, the 32nd chapter, 1 through 8. Now, religion is what got us in trouble. Exodus, the 32nd chapter, one through if we would have just stuck with the doctrine, no, but we had to succumb to all of the other nations that we sojourned in. We had to succumb to their 
ideologies, their folk ways, their mores, their norms, and we wanted to be like them. We saw them partying and we saw their calves and <clears throat> their crosses and their images and their symbols. And we said, man, how can we mix that in with what we do? <clears throat> Which is how we got in trouble, brothers and sisters. So in the book of Exodus, the 32nd chapter, we're going to read verses 1 through 8. And it reads, And when the people saw Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto them, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we don't know what has become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off your golden earrings. So they took off their earrings, brothers and sisters, and they gave it to Joseph. And he says, which are in the ears of your wives and your sons. So yes, both men and women, male and female, wore earrings. <clears throat> and they were not a violation because Moses did not command them through the word of God to take them out. But now when it comes to making this golden calf, Aaron said unto them, take the earrings out of your ears, the wives and your sons and your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ear and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molden calf. And they said, these be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Wait a minute. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was the one who brought you out of Egypt. Now you're giving his credit to your golden earrings that was just in your ears that Aaron took from you with a graven tool and fashioned it and molded it into a golden calf. And you do know who that golden calf was, brothers and sisters, don't, don't you? That golden calf was Hathor, H A T. O R H A T H O R, which was um, the God that was represented by the cow, brothers and sisters. Let me see. Let me see. Let me pull this up. Let me pull it up. So you got Hathor. Hey let me see if I can pull this around. So you could see right here. Let me see if I can. There you go. That's who Hathar was. Uh, the, the golden calf, brothers and sisters. So this just didn't come out of their imagination. They couldn't let that Egyptian mentality go. So although they were out of Egypt, the Lord had taken them from Egypt. They still had an Egyptian mentality. And the same way with, with us, when you come to God and when you come to Jesus, you got to come out of America's mentality. You got to come out of Roman mentality, brothers and sisters. Verse five, and when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. Aaron made proclamation and said, tomorrow is the feast of the Lord. Well, wait a minute. You got the feast of the Lord? which is something that you're supposed to be keeping. But you just made an idol and said, this is who brought us out of Egypt. Now, tomorrow we're going to get back on page and do the feast of the Lord. It says, and they rose up early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat, to drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said unto Moses, go get thee down for your people, which you brought out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed thereunto and said, These be the gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And I'm going to read one more verse, verse 9. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people. And behold, it is a stiff-necked people. 
and nothing has changed today. We still are a stiff necked people. Anything that sounds good to us, anything that looks good to us, we're willing to accept it and digest it and internalize it and bring it forth as if it is God because we have nothing to compare it to. We don't read the word of God. Therefore, we take anybody's word for the word of God. Now, let's deal with a little bit. Mother's Day that just passed. And many of our family members were celebrating Mother's Day. And we understand, brothers and sisters, that living in this country, Coming up as slaves under this society, we digested everything that they had and internalized it, right? Let's look at the origin of Mother's Day. It's, uh, it says, um, it is common belief that the traditions of Mother's Day, and you can type this in by researching the origin of, the root, the origin of Mother's Day and then type in the word Egypt or Babylonian. It says, it is common belief that the tradition of Mother's Day began in the West, originating with Greek and Roman spring festivals dedicated to the maternal goddess or mothering Sunday observed in the European Christian tradition since the 1600s. But in fact, the first celebrations of motherhood occurred right in Egypt as part of the pharaoh tradition. Let's look at what their traditions was. Ancient Egyptian roots. Ancient Egyptians held an annual festival to honor Isis, one of the most popular and enduring goddesses of ancient Egypt who represented the ideal mother and wife and was the uh, patroness of nature and magic. According to ancient Egypt, Egyptian myth mythology, Isis was the wife of Osiris, who was also her brother. When Osiris was murdered by their envious brother Set, Isis gathered Osiris' body parts that had been scattered around Egypt and used them to impregnate herself. She then gave birth to Horus, so this is what is considered the first virgin birth that was recorded on the walls of Egypt or what is considered as the hieroglyphics, which is a Greek term, but the meduneta, in Egyptian. When you get this book called What They Never Told You in Your History Class, you can read about a lot of those things that were written on the walls of Egypt about Isis and Osiris. And again, we have to go away from the biblical word to go into history and nations and culture to make you understand where it came from. I'm looking for another book Right now, let's see if I can find it. I don't know if I can find it. I don't want to keep you all waiting. Let me see. But yeah, there's another book called The Book of the Dead, which is the hieroglyphics. But this book right here, what they never told you in your history class, get a copy of that so you can see some things in it. But let me continue. It says, <clears throat> she then gave birth to Horus, right? Now, this is where you get the word horizon from. When you gaze upon the sky, you say, I'm gazing over the horizon. Horus is where you get the word horizon from. The one who killed his father, Set, is where you get the word sun set from. Because he was the god of darkness. It says, she gave birth to Horus who avenged his father's death and killed Set becoming the first ruler of Egypt. As a result, Isis was regarded as the mother of all pharaohs and became symbolic of motherhood, and an annual festival was held in her honor. Now, 
Let's continue reading, brothers and sisters. Let's get a little bit closer to today because it went from really Babylonian to Egyptian to Greek and Roman to America or the Western world. But let's read about the Greeks, right? Let's see who this Mother's Day celebration really in modern day terms came in to really celebrate. It says the ancient Greeks partook in springtime rituals to honor Rhea, R-H-E-A, Rhea. And let's look at how Rhea looked, brothers and sisters. Let's look at how Rhea looked. So this is where today's version of Mother's Day came from the celebration, right? And let me see if I can blow one up a little bit more so we can look at a larger version of Rhea. So this right here, brothers and sisters, let me bring this down a little bit. All these pop-ups pop up. Okay. So this is Rhea, where your modern day Mother's Day celebration came from. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't take your mother out and, and, and honor your mother. The Bible says honor your mother and your father. But we want you to understand why Mother's Day was chosen during this time of the year, brothers and sisters. So let me finish reading. Let me finish reading. Let me see. Where did it go? Let me finish reading. Okay. Okay, I guess I got to bring it up. Bring it back up. Let me finish reading it. Uh, let's see. It says right here, the ancient Greeks partook in springtime rituals to honor Rhea, the mother of Zeus and the mother of all gods in which they would make offerings of honey cakes and fine drinks and flowers at dawn. The Roman festival of Hilaria. Okay, so you got the Greeks goddess Rhea. And now you got the Roman goddess, Hilaria, was a multi-day celebration centered on the March equinox to honor Sybil, their own mother of gods, okay? Also known as Magna Matar. So you got Sybil, which is what the Romans celebrated, and you got the Greeks goddess, Rhea, which is what they celebrated, but it was all done in March. OK, or in May when it came up to the latter celebrations. OK, and you can go on and on and on and on. Right. It says today's Mother's Day is celebrated all over the world, usually in the months of March or May. The traditions vary in every country, but giving gifts, flowers or making meals to show gratitude to mothers is um, present everywhere. So we want you to understand that the reason why, and my mom doesn't celebrate Mother's Day. She's a Jehovah Witness, right? They don't celebrate too much of any holidays, which they got that part right. Um, but this is why those who are into the word of God move away from the Mother's Day, quote unquote, celebration. And they'll choose another time. They'll choose another day to say, Mom, we love you. We're going to get your sons and your daughters, my brothers, my sisters, and we're going to take you somewhere out to eat. See, brothers and sisters, you have to understand that these specific dates and times that are giving to these celebrations come from somewhere. These dates were just not chosen for some reason out of the blue. Oh, from now on in the month of May, we're going to do Mother's Day. 
the second week, weekend of the month. No, brothers and sisters. It's all correlated with moon and sun and stars and Greek mythology and Roman mythology and Egyptology. So this is why we tell you that God never gave man religion and Jesus never gave man Christianity because when you get into religion, these are the things that you get into. But when you stay with the word of God, brothers and sisters, now you are on to something when you stay with the word of God because you can't fail and you can't go wrong brothers and sisters so let's continue with our lesson god never gave man religion and jesus never gave man christianity let's go ahead and continue with our lesson so we left off with the book of exodus the 32nd chapter and we're going to go ahead and go to exodus the 20th chapter now we reason why we got to read this because remember the origin of these days lied in the worship of the goddesses of fertility, such as Mother's Day and Easter, or the goddess Horus or Osiris in the case of Christmas or Saturnalia, which is what it used to be called, or New Year's Day in the case of the Roman god Janus, which is what the month January was named after. But let's see what God says about these gods. Let's go to Exodus 20, 1 through 5. Exodus 20, 1 through 5, and it reads, And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. We own to something, brothers and sisters, because that original Mother's Day celebration was the worship of a goddess, Rhea and Sybil, Easter, Isis, Aphrodite, and many of the other goddesses of fertility. And we have to share this with you. It says, you shall not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven or in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth, thou shalt not bow down themselves, uh, bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I am the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation to them that hate me. So see, you don't know because you haven't been informed, you are uneducated when it comes to, to the origin of many of these holidays. But that's what this program is for. This Bible class is for. It's for educational purposes, brothers and sisters. And so when we look at this thing, and I have to go a little bit further down because we got so much to cover and so little time. But brothers and sisters, let's just look at it and let's just think about it. We have one of God's holy days coming up. It's called the day of Pentecost. Your church should be informing you about this day. You should keep this day because this is commandment, not religion, but commandment. There's so many things up in here, brothers and sisters, that I really want to get to. We got five minutes left. The formula, let's go to Amos, the third chapter. The formula that Satan uses is one that he always uses. Just like God doesn't change, Satan doesn't change either. Let's see what Satan told Eve in the garden. He had a lie that he mixed in with the truth. Now he said, God knows that the day that you shall eat off the fruit of this tree, right? Which was him. He was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Basically, he was saying, God does know that the day that you listen to me 
and take the information that I'm about to give you that your eyes are going to become open and you're going to become as gods. That's, that was true. Right? But the lie was mixed in there and he said, you shall not surely die. God told them that the day that you eat of this tree thereof, you shall surely die. Now we look at a day as 24 hours. But a day, a thousand, a thousand uh, uh, years to the Lord is as one day to him. So man never lived to see a thousand days. Adam died at 900 and something. Methuselah died at 900 and something. But no man has ever seen a thousand years. So they didn't live to see one day in God's time. But the point that I'm trying to make is Satan mixed the truth with the lie. Now, let's go to the wilderness. We just read about the golden calf. What happened? They mixed that in with the Lord's feast day. It said the next day, they was getting ready to celebrate the Lord's feast day. But that particular day, they was worshiping the golden calf, Hathar. Mixed in what the world giving you with what the Lord said. Today, we mix in the goddess of fertility celebration or Easter with the Passover. You say, oh, he rose early Easter Sunday morning. This is Resurrection Day. Easter ain't got nothing absolutely at all to do with Jesus the Christ. Easter was a Roman celebration of the goddess of fertility. But they mixed it in. Saturnalia, the celebration of what is called Christmas today, has nothing to do with Jesus the Christ, but they say that Christmas is the day that we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. They mixed it in. I'm showing you how things are always mixed in. The Bible doesn't give a birth date. But all of a sudden, the world mysteriously knows that his birthday is December the 25th. But when you research that day, December the 25th, type in God's born on December the 25th, and you'll find out all of the sun gods we're given the birth date, December the 25th. And we got other lessons. We'll be going to that even more. But once we learn the truth and we begin to process, brothers and sisters, and the process of separating the truth from the evil or the lie, and Satan from God, then we can begin to understand this word a little bit more. Let's go to Amos 3 and 3. Amos 3 and 3. God never gave man religion. And Jesus never gave man Christianity. Amos 3 and 3. It says, can two walk together except they agree? So how can you have the word of God? Which says in Exodus does the 20th chapter, thou shall have no other gods beside me. And you turn around and build a golden calf. Thou shall have no other gods beside me, but we worship the goddess of, fort uh, but we celebrate the goddess of fertility, Easter. Thou shall have no other gods before me, but we choose a day that was originally celebrated for the goddesses. Rhea, Greek god, Sybil, Roman god. And we put Mother's Day on top of it. As if it was really about our personal mother. No, originally it was not about our personal mother. Originally it was about these goddesses that the Romans and the Greek celebrated. So we got to do our own thing, brothers and sisters. When I say our own thing, when it comes to our family, our loved ones, our parents, yes, honor your mother and your father every day. Set aside a time where you say, Mom, we're going to take you out. We're going to celebrate you. We're going to get your nails done. We're going to get you a pedicure done. We're going to take you to dinner. we just going to love on you for no reason other than you're my mother. Dad, for no reason other than you're my father. It ain't your birthday. It ain't Mother's Day. 
It's just a day because we love you. Now, when we start thinking like that, brothers and sisters, we began to break the stronghold of this nation, of this society, and the grip that Satan has over us with his religion. You under pressure. I got to go get flowers today. You under pressure. I got to go to Walgreens and get a card today. They sold out. You under pressure. I got to find a gift to get. You under pressure. You stressed all out because you're trying to get something on this one day. No, brothers and sisters. Be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let's close this thing out, brothers and sisters. The only true religion that man was ever given was in the Garden of Eden. And that true religion comes by two words. Obey me. That's the only true religion in the world that God ever gave man, which was his commandment he told us to keep. Obey me. If we recognize that the version of Christianity that we have today in this world and that the world has given to us today, brothers and sisters, <clears throat> you'll find out that it has nothing to do with Jesus. It has nothing to do with the Father. And many of it has nothing to do with the Bible, but it is wrapped in clothed in paganism and Greek mythology and Roman mythology and Egyptology and Babylonianism. Let's look at what Jesus said. Matthew 34 and 30. And this is what we'll close with. Matthew 34. <clears throat> and 30. And we even got to figure out. It, it, that's a shame, brothers and sisters. Uh, uh, hold on, wait a minute. Maybe it's 24. I did that thing again, Sister Keith. Let me see. Matthew 24. We, we even got to figure out a different term to say, brothers and sisters. Let's see. We even got to figure out a different uh, term to say. Because, you know, people say, uh, happy Mother's Day, happy Mother's Day, happy Mother's Day, happy Mother's Day. All day you hear happy Mother's Day. We even got to come up with a different term to use on that particular day so that we won't say Happy Mother's Day. So let's get together and let's come up with that. Y'all put something in the, in the chat. Um, and let me find. Let me find this um, scripture that I'm looking for. KJV. It's in the book of Matthew 22, 34 through 40. Matthew 22, 34 through 30. And it reads, <clears throat> But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. And one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. We're brothers and sisters. You shall love God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. How do you do that? Well, the word of God said, if you love me, keep 
my commandments. I'll say that again. Those of you who are walking around and say, oh, I love God. I love Jesus. Then you have to ask yourself the question. Am I keeping his commandments? Because I'll read it to you. I'll, I'll read it to you, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> let's, let's go to the Bible, to the New Testament. Let's go to the book of John 14. And let's read what the Lord says for those who say that they love him. Right? And you define your love for God by what he says do. If you love me, keep my commandments, right? But if you say that you love him, and then we're not keeping his commandments, let's look at what he says about that. John 14, 15 through 31. John 14. And let's read down. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. He says, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you yet a little while and the world seeth me no more, but you see me because I live, you shall, <clears throat> you shall live also. At that day, you shall know that I am and my father, and you in me, and I in you. He that have my commandments and keep them, he it is that love me. And he that love me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Verse 23, well, verse 22, Judah saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how it is that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the father which have sent me. So he keeps saying, if you love me, do what? Keep my words. Right? Now, let's go to one last place. 1 John 2 and 4. And I'll close with this. I know I should have closed a long time ago, but I'll close with this. 1 John. I know y'all want to get to that Lakers game. 1 John 2 and 4. Right? It says, He that saith, I know him, and keep not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So, brothers and sisters, maybe we'll do that lesson next week, which is called, You Can't Say You Know and Love God and Not Keep His Commandments. Sister Key, maybe we should do that lesson next week, but we also got to do the Pente Pentecost uh, lesson as well. So brothers and sisters, we thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Bible Class Truth Hour here on the four-time national award-winning POET radio. We're going to close out with Numbers, the sixth chapter, as we always do. So don't go nowhere. Let the Lord bless you with his word. Numbers, the sixth chapter. And we're going to read verses 20, 22. I'm sorry, 24 through 27. It says, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance unto thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. Thank you so much for your time. Now, for those who are on YouTube and you have a Facebook page, then go and like our Facebook page, which is called the Truth Hour Bible Class. The Truth Hour Bible Class. And those who are on YouTube, we ask that you please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Truth 
Hour TV. Truth Hour TV. If you would like to be added to our text message invite reminder list, then text your name and the keywords Truth Hour to 312 719 7310. Again, your name and the keywords Truth Hour to 312 719 7310. We are on live every Tuesday on Facebook Live at 7 o'clock p.m. After the lesson um, is done on the live, we air or upload the video to our YouTube channel, Truth Hour TV. Please leave in the comment section what you thought about tonight's lesson. We do read those comments and we want to know um, what you thought about the lessons that we shared according to what's written in the Word of God. All right. So thank you so much, brothers and sisters. We um, are signing off and wishing you peace and blessings in Jesus, Yeshua name, until next Tuesday. Peace and blessings.